Was it? Oh, that's two summers ago. When you did the one that you gave away? Yeah. Yeah. So we counted up who made it to the most classes and gave them a Vitamix. It was pretty fun. It was the one woman did not miss a single class all summer long. You've been to a lot of classes, huh, Nancy? No, I think the first one was a drawing and the second one, or the first, there was one or the other. One was a drawing and one was uh, the most. Because I think you've done one or two. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of other places you could be right now. Right, Thea? Amen. Amen. <laughs> already know, you already know I like you. You already know I like you. Um, so you could be a lot of different places right now. You chose to be here to learn about toxins. Pretty nuts. You actually, you know, aren't on the river paddling or going for a run or a hike or sitting on the deck having a beer. There's a lot of places you could be. I honor you for coming in here for half an hour and listening to me. Um, we've been talking about toxins now since we opened our first clinic in Bend. And I, I'm always just really open and honest with people, okay? I had a new patient come in last week. And his wife finally got him to come in after four years. She's been a regular patient for four years. And he said, listen, doc, I know what you do. I don't want to hear any of it. I just want, need to know, can you help me with my low back pain? He said, I don't want to know about diet. I don't want to know about this. I don't know about I said, totally, man, let's roll. I said, we can do that. But you got to understand if you're part of this family, you're going to hear a whole bunch of stuff. Like it or not, that's just the way that I am. And if you're not interested in anything at all, plug your ears when you're in here because you're going to hear it, right? So I honor you for actually taking some time to show up here. We're talking about toxins, and this is um, my 4G, and I tell patients and people I meet in the community, we're a 4G clinic, which means we serve and take care of four generations. Okay, some of you in this room, you're a 4G too. So... That's, of course, me, that ugly mug right there. That's my daughter. That's my mom holding my daughter, and that's my grandma. So, like I said, some of you in this room, you come in here, and your grandkids are getting adjusted. Um, I even have great-grandkids getting adjusted. Okay? Education is everything. So that leads me to my first piece of toxicity, and it is giving yourself the opportunity to let go of social media from time to time and detox from everything else going on in the world. So uh, many of you in this room know that that I do lots of water fasting and we did a five-day water fast. And it was actually inspired, believe it or not, from my four-year-old nephew, Penn, who was encouraged to do a TV fast or screen fast. It is preschool. So the whole classroom did a, a screen fast for 30 days. I thought it was just magnificent and brilliant. And you can only imagine what changed in these children's lives when they got off the screen. So we had to fill the day with things like my, my brother and his, and his wife, painting and reading and all that stuff that we used to do. So I want to encourage you that when we're on social media, which we're on social media live right now, however... The only thing that we do on social media is either brag about how cool we think we are or compare ourselves to other people, right? And nothing good happens when we compare ourselves to other people, myself included. So um, give yourself permission to do a social media fast for a weekend, a day, five days, a month, whatever. Um, And I, I do believe that it is one of the most significant toxins in our life right now is social media and our human, human ability to compare ourselves to others and think we're not good enough. Because nothing good get, or I'm sorry, people don't post the bad stuff on social media, right? Look how great my new car is. Look how great my family is. They don't post their fight that's happening. Cool? So give yourself permission to do that because the major toxin in our lives is probably emotional toxicity. Emotional toxicity. We beat ourselves up. We have emotional distress. We have poor thought patterns that are innately built into us by preachers, teachers, mothers, fathers, and all the different people that we have given our lives to as leaders. Um, This stuff gets ingrained. Um, I can't heal. I'm going to have to live with this pain for the rest of my life. My body's not able to get through this. I have to become my disease or my sickness or we become attached to those things 
The biggest breakthroughs that happen in this clinic for my patients in the community are when we detach ourselves from those things. Okay? So if you've ever been labeled with you have this diagnosis or you have this condition, accept it and then leave it there and walk out and say, that's not me. I don't become from this point forward defined by my diagnosis or what some doctor with a white coat told me that I'm going to have to live with for the rest of my life. Fair? So allow that emotional, uh, emotional health care piece or baggage, thank you, that you carry with you, let go of it. And then you'll have your biggest breakthrough. Okay? So here's my 4G, right? Um, that was my daughter on Cinco de Mayo. She picked that out at TJ Maxx. And I was with her looking for a pot. And I'm like, yep, you can have that. <laughs> so I got a problem. All right. And then there's me just a couple of days ago with my daughter. And the reason I put this up here right now is because we all have a purpose in life. Okay. And my purpose right now happens to be raise my daughter and build health in my community. Of course, my wife falls into that too. Be a good family man, number one. And number two, help serve my community. And I even tell people, I say, we're going to save lives in this building. We're going to save lives in this building. And if you don't believe me, talk to some people that have been around long enough and they'll tell you. Okay. So that happens to be my purpose. Find your purpose because I'm going to go over some information with you in 20, 20, 25 minutes. And I'm not going to go over the, you know, things that you can get from, um, Reader's Digest. I'm going to shoot you straight. I'm going to tell you what serious stuff is going on right now in this community and everywhere else in the United States. And sometimes we just have to look truth in the face to get healthy. Fair? Uh, my biggest breakthrough for myself in my own healing journey was, um, I've told some of you this before, I actually had a, started developing autoimmune symptoms. And I saw one doctor, and I didn't want to, but I just had to know if my brain was <laughs> Right. I want to know if someone else was in agreement with me outside of my wife, who was always in agreement with me. No, it goes the other way around. Just joking. <laughs> oh, I saw a whole bunch of weird faces right there. It goes the other way around. Yeah, okay. Um, and the doctor kind of told me this stuff, and I was like, yep. And he goes, you know, here's what I'd do. And I go, well, that's not what I'd do. And I walked out the door and got healthy. And <laughs> here we go, right? So find your why, find your purpose in life. It'll make the getting healthy easy, right? I just told someone else, they're laying on my table today and they said, I don't know how or why this is happening. And, um, you know, if you're a believer, cool. If you're not, just sub in whatever else. She said, I think God's got a plan for me. I said, I know God has got a plan for you. And it includes getting healthy uh, because we can't live our life without getting healthy. Um, some of you have seen this slide before. I've taught this class dozens of times in the community. You're getting the short version. But there's three types of people on this planet. People who wonder what happens. People who watch other people make things happen. And people who actually make things happen themselves. And in terms of health, you've got to be the person who makes something happen. The worst place to be is this one right here. Uh, Doc, I don't know what the hell happened to me. I just woke up one day and I was sicker than a dog. And they told me I'm going to die next month. You don't want to be that person that goes, oh, dang. And you don't want to be the person who is watching other people get healthy because it kind of stinks. Sometimes we got to start there, right? That's why we created this open area because you come in here, you don't know why you're here sometimes and you get to see all these miracles happen every single time you're in here. You want to be someone who makes something happen. I'll tell you right now, Pangea Tribe is a bunch of people who are making things happen. Um, talk to some people in, in the clinic. Okay, so... In terms of toxicity, everyone has a bucket in their body. Think of it like this. Your bucket is constantly becoming filled with toxins. Luckily enough, our body is built with detoxification pathways to void and get rid of toxins that we're bioaccumulating. Every single person in this room is toxic. If you don't think you're toxic, you don't understand what toxicity is. The air that we breathe, the stuff we put on our skin, the water we drink, the water we wash with, the stuff we brush our teeth with, everything is bioaccumulating inside of your body and filling your bucket. If you don't have a way to empty your bucket, you're going to get sick and you're going to get knocked down. Okay, and I'm just shooting people straight because the statistics are telling us that. All right, if you don't have a way of eliminating toxins, you're going to get sick. And here's the thing that I want you to understand. Lots of times toxicity symptoms 
are the way that you're feeling. We just don't know that those are the symptoms of being toxic. Fatigue, pain, discomfort, headaches, inability to sleep properly. These are symptoms of toxic overload on the system. And you start looking at my list right here. Inability to lose weight, dizziness, brain fog. These are toxin symptoms. We all go through periods of time where we have these things. And I can show you that those are toxic symptoms when I start to educate you on where you're getting these things from. Okay? People who can empty their bucket decrease their toxic stress load and they can live a healthier, happier life. And I showed you this picture for a reason. That's my grandmother. She has Alzheimer's disease. Okay? It's progressing very rapidly. There's not a good strategy in place for emptying out her bucket. Okay? That's why I put that there. But mom was diagnosed with autoimmune disease, reversed it. I had symptoms of audio, autoimmune disease, reversed them. And my daughter, she's not going to have that because she's going to know how to keep her bucket emptying because it's going to be filling up. All right? So where do most toxins come from? I have to tell you, I have to start with the number one toxic load right now, and it's medications. All right? Last year in the United States, over 300 people a day died from direct side effects from their medications. That's a 757 crashing every day. Do you think that make, make, would make news? Yeah. If a 757 goes down, guess what? We're going to talk about that for months, probably a year. But this is happening every single day is direct side effects from medications. I put this up here. And it's going to stay up there for another week or so. These are the medications that my patients got off of in the past two years. This thing filled up in two years. Okay? I was going through this today with someone. This, this one right here, I specifically, I remember where most of these came from. This woman came in. Guess how long she was under care for? Ten years. She was under chiropractic care for two and a half years. Getting her body. I mean, we did a lot of other work. Getting her body to the place where she could get off this stuff. I remember when she came in, she goes, I'm done. And I said, cool, let's, let's go to the next level of healing. Okay, medications are toxic. I'll put this slide up here because this is blowing my mind right now. One in 32 children are going to be diagnosed with autism by 2032. The World Health Organization just said in 2017 that one in 50 Americans, children born today have autism. One in 50 Okay, and if we continue at this rate, it's going to be 1 in 32, 100%. This is a problem, okay? These are our kids. I mean, I have a child right now. This is the chapter of my life that I'm in. Number one, I want to make sure my grandma's around long. And number two, I want to make sure that my kids are going to live a healthier life because this is making me sick. One in two children will be diagnosed with autism by 2032. It's just absolutely insane. One in three children born after the age of 2000 will die of a big diagnosis with diabetes. Okay, I mean, I don't know. This is absolutely mind-blowing. This is the one. This is the one that connects with this. 75% of Americans over the age of 40 are diagnosed with a chronic disease or autoimmune disease. 75%. So if you're over the age of 40, three-quarters of the people that you know are diagnosed with chronic disease or autoimmune disease. All right? Back to the medications. We make up 5% of the world's population. Everyone say 5 Five. Americans, 5%. Last year, we took three quarters of the world's pharmaceutical drugs. Three quarters of the world's pharmaceutical drugs. Okay? Last year, there were six million prescription um, uh, drugs written for uh, antipsychotic drugs for children. Okay? And it all falls into place because of these two first, first two slides right here. All right? Less than a minute from now. Less than a minute from now, one person is going to die of cancer in 54 seconds. Every 54 seconds, an American dies of cancer. Okay? I went to Penn State. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania. We used to do this big dance marathon thing where we raise a whole bunch of money for um, St. Jude Medical Center. So we'd raise millions of dollars every single year. And uh, I always had a problem with that. And the more I knew, you know, I graduated from school. I went to work for Big Pharma. All right? second largest drug dealer in the world and then you know some of you know my story then i became a chiropractor because i was like this is not okay all right i was like i had a problem with that i'm like okay we raised two and a half million dollars my senior year at penn state and like 
they tell us that it's going to find a cure for cancer. And I'm like, help me understand, right? What, how is, is it going for the treatment? Or what is it going for? I just always have a problem with that, okay? 180 chemicals were found in um, cord blood. Sorry, I'm in the wrong spot. In cord blood. Environmental Working Group measured cord blood of newborn infants. 180 chemicals were found to cause cancer in cord blood. Cord blood, okay? So mom is raising healthy baby, and mom's blood that's feeding baby has 180 chemicals known to cause cancer in them. Kind of crazy? Yeah, everyone's shaking their head. Absolutely crazy. Um, Columbia University said that 95% of cancer comes from your environment. So the next time someone tells you that you're going to get cancer because your mom and dad got cancer, you need to look at them and say, you're not telling me the full story. It's because of excuse me, our environment and toxic overload. Here's the toxic generation epidemic that's going on right now. Lead, mercury, and glyphosate. Everyone say lead. 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 Everyone say mercury. 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 Everyone say glyphosate. 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 Okay? I'm going to show you where these come from. <laughs> Roundup. Everyone say Roundup. Good, because Roundup's the same thing as glyphosate. So I was at Wilco this morning, got 50% off my DeWalt tools there. It was a great deal. I had to go to get, get a, a new DeWalt saw. And as I'm there, uh, and I'm not making this up, person in front of me checking out a bottle of glyphosate. It just, or, I'm sorry, Roundup. Bottle of Roundup, going to go home and kill some weeds. Okay? I'm going to tell you why this stuff is so damaging and dangerous. They're spraying it on all of our food. It's the three toxins that are affecting four generations. Lead. Here's what's important to know about lead. Um, so you're sitting in a building right now that was built 40 years ago. And when we were renovating this space, guess what we had the plumbers take out of it? Lead pipes. Asbestos, yes, in the floor, lead pipes. Okay. So if you're living in a home that was built or downtown, there is lead pipes still in Bend, Oregon. Okay, Amity Creek just had tested positive for lead two years ago. Amity Creek, that's where our kids go to school, right? So lead is not an older thing that we're getting from paint. Already. It's still in our environment, and it's very toxic. It's a neurotoxin that starts to turn on and off genes that shut down your body's ability to do things like lose weight. All right, there's a study that they did on mice called the Agouti Mouse Study where they gave the mouse BPA. You guys know what BPA is? Where is it? Where do you get BPA from? Plastics. Plastics. BPA from plastics. They, they gave the mouse BPA, and it's an agouti mouse. That's what they do other experiments on. And the mouse couldn't lose weight. The mouse's babies couldn't lose weight. The mouse's babies' babies couldn't lose weight. They triggered a gene that turned on the obesity epidemic inside of that baby mouse. And no matter what they did for it, they couldn't exercise it skinny. They couldn't feed it skinny. They starved it. Couldn't do anything. And it's all because they turned on a gene that triggered obesity. So it's not a genetic problem, it's an environmental problem. Everyone understand that? So there's my lead donor, my beautiful mother. And um, we get our lead from our mom. Okay? And it lasts for four generations. So my baby got my wife's lead. And the reason is, is because mom is giving baby blood. And when mom is pregnant, bone density changes and lead gets stored in bone. So bone density changes during pregnancy, lead leaches out of the bone, goes into the blood, and goes to the baby. Okay? So the amount of lead that you have in your body is directly proportionate to the amount of lead that your mother has in her body. Okay? See, I told you, I'm going to tell you, Nancy, you know this. I'm going to tell you something that nobody else in town is going to tell you. I'm going to shoot you straight, and we're going to get right to it because we need to get healthy. Mercury. We are now not in the lead generation because... You know, my kid's not chewing on a, a crib that has lead paint in it, and my house doesn't have lead paint. We're still getting it from our pipes. This is not a Flint, Michigan problem. This is a nationwide problem. Okay, so we're still getting lead. But more importantly, my generation, the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s generation, we're in the mercury generation, okay? Um, I have eight amalgam fillings. It's the last link to emptying my bucket, Okay? You've, some of you have been on this journey with me for a long time. I've been preaching this. Also, lens care. So if you wore contact lenses in the 70s and 80s, they put mercury into contact solution. So that's like just dropping you know, it right into your eye because it kills things. Um, vaccinations are still loaded with mercury. 
So there's no such thing as a safe vaccination. Um, you'll come to my vaccine class. I'll teach you all about that. And of course, the major source of le- um, sorry, mercury comes from our mouths. This is a label from a, an amalgam filling. Okay. I took, it, uh, hey, I took it off of this one. This is my quick version. So just know that um, it's a neurotoxin. It says it right on it. Neurotoxin, neurotoxin. Don't put a neurotoxin in your mouth because smart countries like Austria, Australia, Canada, France, Great Britain, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, Sweden, and Switzerland, they don't put it in people's mouths anymore. So what the heck? Why are we putting it in our mouths? And why can't I, why can't I find you know, dentists that agree that that's a bad idea? Here's the mercury symptoms. The first time I learned about mercury toxicity was four years ago. I knew how bad it was, but I learned about it because I went to a seminar with some of the great minds, Dr. Dan Pompa, Dr. Joe Mercola, uh, Dr. Dan Brown, and we were talking about this stuff. And I went through this, this, and I go, holy smokes, 14. I had 14 of those symptoms. 14 of those symptoms I have when I first learned about mercury toxicity. Flu shots, flu shots um, still do have mercury in them. It's called thimerosal. Thimerosal. It's the worst one you can get is a flu shot. Don't get flu shots. Guys, you're not going to die if you get the flu. Okay. Um, Here we go. Influenza, thimerosal. Anytime you see thimerosal, think mercury. Influenza has thimerosal, has egg protein in it. Um, If you ever wonder why people are allergic to chicken and eggs, it's from vaccines. It's because they're injecting um, chicken and egg particles, proteins into the blood where it doesn't belong. Body triggers an immune response and says, next time I see chicken or egg, guess what? Rash, breakout, anxiety, all this crazy stuff. Um, influenza, again, formaldehyde. You guys want formaldehyde in your body? No, me neither. Um, formaldehyde, again. Um, anybody want uh, canine kidney tissue, dog kidney tissue in their body? Yeah, me neither. Um, Thimerosal, egg protein, egg protein, egg protein, egg protein. Okay? It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Okay? So, um, everyone say Dondo. Thank you. Dondo. Say it again. Dondo. He's my new dentist in town. Because everyone asks me, Doc, what are you doing? Okay, I'm going to see Dr. Dondo. And go there for a consultation. He'll take a look at your mouth and he'll tell you how to get your mouth cleaned up so you cannot have mercury poisoning any longer. Because if you have silver fillings in your mouth, I took the slide out that I was going to show you because I needed to cut time. 50% of that silver thing in your mouth is mercury. And it leaches out of your teeth and goes directly into your blood, through your gums and into your blood. And it makes you really, really sick. And you do not want to go to any regular dentist to have this stuff removed. Because if it's not removed with the care that it deserves, it can make you really, really sick. It's better to leave it in than have it taken out wrong. Let me put it to you that way. Okay? However, if you, have, if you open your mouth and you see something silver, everyone say Dondo. Dondo. Go to Dr. Dondo and have him talk to you about getting it out safely. Fair? It's been a long time since I could say something like that. All right? Just trust me, you want to get it out. Just start the engagement process of thinking how to get it out. Fastest growing disease in the United States, Alzheimer's disease. I put this in there because my grandma has this stuff. All right? I don't want to have this. And I know that the only way for me not to end up just like grandma is if I do the things that grandma didn't do because grandma didn't know. She grew up in the lead generation. She's got a mouthful of aluminum. She gets oodles of vaccinations every time she goes in. They pump her full of stuff. And she takes tons of these. I mean, it's not... It's, it, it's hard to even think about because I want to help her, but I can't. All right. A hundred million people will have Alzheimer's disease by 2050. That's the one that I need you to think about. There's 250 million Americans. By 2050, if we keep polluting ourselves the way that we are, half of the world is going to be sick with Alzheimer's disease. Isn't that insane? If we keep injecting ourselves with all these vaccinations and we keep pumping our mouths full of mercury and we keep, you know, stay stuck in this lead epidemic and we keep doing these things, we're going to have a sad world. 
We have to start today. We have to clean up. It starts with you. It starts with your kids. We've got to get this situation cleaned up. Um, aluminum. So this is something that is just absolutely going to blow your mind. The allowable levels of aluminum, according to the FDA, our Food and Drug Administration, for an 8 to 10 pound infant are exceeded by more than a hundred times if you give them the hep B vaccine and follow the schedule. So if they follow the hep B vaccine, they're going to be getting a hundred times more aluminum from the vaccination than is allowed by the FDA in a saline drip. Nobody's asking this question. Why is there aluminum in the vaccine? Uh, it's an adjunctive. Which means they can't, when, when you produce a vaccination, you have to stimulate an immune response or else the vaccine doesn't work. Okay? So we're taking lab made enhanced viruses and bacteria and things like that. And we have to have a carrier agent to get it into the system to agitate and aggravate the system to, so that the system brings in the troops to do the job. Okay? And also, these heavy metals are used as preservatives. Because if you're going to take a vaccination and have something in there that's supposed to stimulate an immune response and it's going to sit on a shelf and get shipped around, and it needs to be preserved. That's what the formaldehyde's used for. Um, the aluminum is an adjunctive, which exacerbates the immune response so that when the troops show up from the immune system, they can actually, in theory, which, I mean, it does work. It's just that the, all the other effects that are happening, we're having on the system are just, you can't outweigh it. Okay? So, I want to talk about glyphosate really quickly, and then I'm going to give you a couple solutions. So, glyphosate. This is Roundup. If you ever see Roundup, run from it. Okay? You guys feeling smart tonight? I'm going to get a little nerdy on you. I think it's, a, it's my nerdy side coming out. Everyone say shikimate. shikimate. Sounds like a mushroom, but it's not. Okay? Scientists found that this nasty um, pesticide, herbicide complex, activates something called the shikimate pathway in plants. What it does is it's a, it's a natural enzymatic process of plants, okay? And it helps plants reproduce and grow and has all of these biological things that happen that keep a plant healthy. When you spray a plant with Roundup or glyphosate, what it does is it blocks the shikimate pathway. And the plant does what? Dies. It's a pathway that is used for life in a plant. Okay? So what they do is they genetically modify things like corn, soybean, papaya, wheat, and all this different stuff. They genetically modify them so that when they spray them with glyphosate, the shikimate pathway in it doesn't get shut down. But all the plants around it get shut down. They all die. So you have a whole field full of soybean and not a single weed in it. I lived in Iowa for years. Okay? Scientists also found out that the shikimate pathway exists in bacteria. Here's where it gets interesting. You're more bacteria than you are human. You have more bacterial cells in your gut microbiome, in you and on you, than you do human cells that, that make you up. Okay? You have 76 trillion cells that make up you as a human. You have more bacteria living in you and on you, keeping you alive. So guess what happens when we come in contact with glyphosate? It kills bacteria. Because bacteria have the shikimate pathway like plants. And the FDA swears up and down that this has no effects on humans. And they're lying. I guarantee this is going to come out. It's going to be nasty. You guys know that Monsanto just sold to Bayer? Yes. You know how tarnished the name Monsanto was? You know, they had to do something. Because people know that Monsanto equals bad. All right? So now Monsanto is in the process of transitioning out of that. To become, I'm not sure what they're going to become. The name Bayer, the name, the name Monsanto. Yeah, they're going to be, Bayer's going to give them a new name. Okay? Um, so I'll put that in there about glyphosate because we have, we can't get away from it. We just have to do the best that we can to eliminate it. And that means we have to eat organic. 
we have to choose organic and we have to grow our own food and we have to do things today that we didn't even really consider were necessary 20, 30 years ago. Um, you guys know that like, there was no such thing as organic in the 70s. I'm like, what? Well, Everything was. was yeah. Organic way back. Right. Automatic. Automatically. 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 Okay? Now, I want to give you a couple of tips when you leave here because this is some dark stuff. All right? Now, we can stand up here, and I have another class coming up called The Dirty Dozen. It's in two weeks. I'm going to teach you about really, um, really good ways to get rid of things that you're putting on your body. So I'm going to give you 12 tips of things to eliminate like the black pit plague. You're going to go home after my Dirty Dozen class, and you're going to open up your cabinet at home, and you're going to go, i got to get rid of that, i got to get rid of that, i got to get rid of that. I'm going to give you 12 of them. So if you're at this class... I'm telling you the dark stuff. I'm going to tell you some stuff to go home and immediately start cleaning out your house. Okay? One thing I want you all to do, when you go home, it, people like to smell good, yes? I want you all to go home and I want you to look at your deodorant. If it has aluminum in it, where are you going to throw it? In the garbage. It belongs in the garbage, not under your arms. Okay, because the leading known link to Alzheimer's and dementia is aluminum toxicity. And you can do something right now today to eliminate aluminum out of your life because probably the two main sources of aluminum toxicity come from vaccines and deodorant. And you can go home and you can take your deodorant that says aluminum on it, any form of aluminum, and pitch in the garbage and go, that ain't me. Fair? So, you can do that tonight, right? And on the 26th, you're going to come to my Dirty Dozen class. And I always go to a natural grocer and I always buy 12 products. So I always give them out. Okay? Ladies, there's a website from the Environmental Working Group. The main cosmetic that is loaded with lead is, guess what? Lipstick. You can go to the website. Um, I'll actually, I'll get the, the website. If you, if you want to see the website, I'll pull it for you and show you. Um, and it has a list of every single lipstick that has lead in it. You don't want to put that on your lips because lead is a neurotoxin. Okay? You're going to throw away this. You're going to, ladies, check. I'll talk more about the lipstick on the 26th. If you open your mouth and you see something silver in it, you're going to call my dentist and you're going to go talk to them. You can't have mercury toxicity. It's a neurotoxin. Say neurotoxin. neurotoxin. You don't want it in your brain. Okay? I'm going to finish up on this. I started doing some testing in my office because we have a full spectrum cellular detox program that we walk our patients through. It can take anywhere from three months to three years. It's all dependent on how toxic people are. But when I started doing this detox program with patients a year and a half ago, I found one thing. We are much more toxic than we ever thought we were. And you do not want to be someone who wonders, what the heck happened to me? Because I told you the numbers. Trust me, you don't want to be that person. Okay? I started doing some heavy metal testing on my patients. The results were absolutely blowing my mind. I couldn't imagine that someone could be this toxic in something and still be looking at me, talking to me. Right, Nancy? Yes. And it all makes sense. When you get the test done and you go, hmm, makes sense. They go, cool. We only have one way to go, and it's towards health. Because you can't stay where you're at. When you know that you know something, you only have one option, and it is to get healthy. When you don't know that you don't know, you only have one option, and it's to be a victim to your diagnosis or disease, right? So when we started doing this testing, it absolutely blew my mind. And I thought to myself, this, this is not a small issue. This is a massive issue, right? We could have bought this whole building, 11,000 square feet of this building, and hired other doctors to just focus on the toxicity. You see what I'm saying? But the chiropractic concern is equally as big because people are walking around with their brain stem and their nervous system kinked and shut down, and you can't, it doesn't matter, if you want to get rid of your toxins, it's not going to make a difference. Because if your brain's not communicating with your body, you got equally as big problems. 
So I just want you to understand the magnitude of this. All right? Go home, throw out your aluminum. Come to class on the 26th. Give you 12 tips. I'll buy 12 products. I'll give them out. And of course, if you have questions about the detox program, talk to us. Good? Great. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Wrap. Thank you. I'll stick around for 12 minutes. If anyone